It's Wednesday, February 28th, 2018. So you're tuned in to TNIB. What's up? I'm Vince. I'm Anthony. And this is the Geek She Culture Show. We talk about all the greatest things in the world. It's the end of February. Yeah, it's like exactly the end. It is the end of February. Uh, time is swiftly moving along. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like it wasn't too long ago that Christmas just came by and New Year's and now we're Th- in March. That's, that's the that's the bad thing about like the first two months or so because it's just like a like you're getting used to it and then yeah. you're like where'd it go? Yeah, and then it's like oh wait, there's no holidays, there's no nothing, nothing's really happening. Well, so, there's a uh... family day. Yeah, and Valentine's Day. Uh, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> And the Lunar New Year. Oh, yes. The Lunar New Year. Yeah. And I'm not a part of it. Oh. So who cares? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get back in there. How ironic. Anthony is seeing red on the days of red. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Fuck that shit. Wow. Great. Great. Even that was already two weeks ago. Holy cow. The Olympics are over. Damn. Time is a uh, moving. I, I can't complain, though. I'm just waiting for the warm weather. I need to come. It's, uh, well, you're gonna have to wait a little bit. I know. Because even though it's like 14 degrees right now. I know. Celsius. I know. I heard that we're gonna get 20 centimeters of snow tomorrow. I know. Welcome to Canada. Uh, good thing I got that truck now. Oh, yeah, true. I just run through that shit now. Yeah, so we're gonna get that, so, yeah. Fun stuff, fun stuff. Uh, where do you want to start this week? I don't know. I think we should start with... A listener question. A listener question. That's why I have my laptop open. I completely forgot. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure this one is from Paul as a follow-up to what we... Were discussing last time. Yeah. yeah. He wants... Because he said he wanted to continue asking questions weekly. More general-based Bring them on. Bring them so, on. So, as... Uh, I guess we'll follow through with that since it does... It does give us some fun little discussion topics. So here we go. Did I, did I masterfully stall enough? Listen, I didn't see any stalling. <laughs> I heard, I heard intriguing conversation between two colleagues. Okay, colleagues. Is that what we yeah, are? We're colleagues. Colleagues. We're colleagues. When when the microphone is on, we're colleagues. Jesus Christ! <laughs> as soon as that microphone's off. Swift enemies. <laughs> I hope. We, I hope on either of our wedding days, this is my colleague. <laughs> this is <laughs> Vince. I would really like you to be my best colleague. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, Paul. Here we go. You asked. I have a lot more general questions to ask you guys. Do it. But I'll try and keep them more topical where i can i I misread that as tropical and i thought what the fuck tropical skittles (laughs) coming in this week's question came into mind after you guys gave your review on noir jaguar Ooh, fancy as you mentioned chadwick boseman's outfit at the end of the movie with his black suit and scarf was stylish as fuck and ryan gosling looked totally badass in his coat from blade runner 2049 Mm -hmm. but both of those would look ridiculous on anyone in real life are there any other iconic signature outfits that you can think of that look great in their portrayal but would look ridiculous in real life it would be probably easier to limit things to live action portrayals Maybe Captain Tight Pants or Han Solo, but you could certainly delve into the anime video game realm as well. I do think that if you go down the anime and video game realm... Kingdom Hearts! No. You you can't, because they are just so ridiculous. Anything designed by Tetsuya Nomura. Because, I mean, it's like going to a cosplay event, and you're just like, yeah, people look ridiculous. How many zippers you need on these pants? A thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I was trying to think about stuff. Uh, The only thing I could think of is if I saw someone in the clueless dress clueless dress or was it clueless that movie where it's the the high school girl and she's in clueless yeah that's clueless in the yellow plaid ensemble yeah i think that would be ridiculous but But that's also retro now right yeah that was the 90s look though yeah like you can't so to be honest like i'm trying to think i got some stuff maybe whenever i think of live action stuff that may look ridiculous it's always based in high fantasy or fantasy like yeah like sure i can go live action lord of the rings yeah right it'd be ridiculous if someone dressed up like frodo but that's yeah. cosplay at that point mm. um i i yeah i don't know yeah 
What do you got, though? Uh, so the first one for me is very simple. It's Doctor Who's trench coat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I every, can see every that. Doctor Who fan wants a Doctor Who trench, trench coat. coat. But it looks like shit. The thing about those Doctor Who trench coats is they're all different for each doctor. Yeah. And there's a very specific reason. It's because they don't choose the doc the, the jacket first. They choose the doctor and they give him a jacket that suits yeah, him. Yeah, they style the jacket but around But people the just want to pick up that jacket. I know a lot of people who have the... Uh, I think it's the 11th Doctor, mm-hmm. um, the villain from Jessica Jones. I forgot oh, his name. okay. The British dude, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. <laughs> the, uh. Well, the British dude in the Doctor Who series. Yeah, <laughs> got it. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Uh, yeah, I forget his name, but he's the famous one. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, everybody likes to buy that jacket, but it, it does not look good in person. No. No. Uh, likewise, uh, the jacket that Neil wears in The Matrix all, yeah, also kind of a trench coat, more leather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those ones are not very hot, shall we say. Uh, I think any for me, like a lot of old gangster movies uh, and stuff like that, like it looks good in the time when you're wearing a suit. But I think anyone who wears a trilby <laughs> or a fedora, yeah, like it doesn't like unless you're unless you're like a 60 plus year old man. With graying everything, mm-hmm. I don't think that that is a hat that fits I, modern. I times. agree. I agree. Yeah. It's not something that that works. Um, I'm just trying. Know, to, yeah. yeah, like a lot of it comes down like the ridiculousness of stuff really comes down to does it suit the person who's wearing it? Mm-hmm. And a lot of the times when they when people pick stuff from fandoms, yeah, it's like even if they're doing cosplay, it's like oh that doesn't. Mm-hmm. fit who you are like mm-hmm. you're doing the character and you love it fantastic mm-hmm. but like if you wanted if you were to ask me like do i look like link or something i'd be like no <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah i don't know if i could come up with anything else hmm. i think I'm, it's I'm hard stumped. because normally normally that stuff is, is made for like you look at it and you're like I don't want to wear that. Or mm-hmm. that looks like a person who would wear something in this modern time, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of rare that you have a movie like <laughs> that jacket from <laughs> Blade Runner. Yeah. yeah. That jacket's so cool. Yeah. I'll buy it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, go for it. I'm basically Ryan Gosling. Hey, if you can afford it, go I'm pretty for fit. It. All right. I- I'm Ryan Gosling fit. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> he said it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no. I. That's good. Like the the ones he listed as examples as Captain Taipants or uh, Han Solo. Mm-hmm. I mean, those kind of fall more in the category of cosplay. I guess because like even if you could wear you could wear them out normally, because mm-hmm. uh, they do seem like fairly normal. Like they wear what khakis and a and a button up shirt. Yeah, and that's kind of it. So yeah, it'd be yeah, fine. Yeah. They can get away with most movie fashion. Yeah. As long as, again, it's not those crazy period pieces. Yeah. Don't go walking around. I, oh, I learned. Do you know why people in like the 1500s and stuff wore powdered ri- wigs? No. Because of syphilis. Really? Yeah. So one of the symptoms of syphilis, and because syphilis was so rampant during that period, uh, one of the symptoms is hair loss and yeah. early hair loss. Oh. And so I think it was Henry the IV. Uh, he had syphilis and started losing his hair at 17. So he hired like 13 wig makers to make him these powdered wigs. And then because the King was wearing it, everyone was like, shit, that's dope. And then it went down into like upper middle class. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, if you're wearing a powdered wig, don't do it. Cause it it makes you look like you got syphilis. (laughs) (laughs) That's all I got. That's that's my tidbit of random information for the day. Um, great. But do we move on now? Do we move on to our our impromptu review? Yeah. Or do we want to move, save that for later? What else are we can talk about? I don't know. Picks weeks. Sorry, I just have to. I have to yeah, respond. I don't know what you're doing over here. What's <laughs> happening? No, no. So it's okay. Long story short. Are you, is it story time? Yeah. Uh, I Okay, work story time. All right. Very quick. I'm going to sum up really quick. I had to make a video for work. Yes. Like a, like an Olympic. Basically, we, we celebrated the Olympics, and we had some team events, and 
there was a content like there was a, a company wide contest for which property could make the best videos celebrating the Olympics, Olympics because yeah. my company sponsors Team Canada. Yeah. Um. Uh. I put my. I, I had. The, I had an idea. I executed and I made it. Okay. And people were like, "Wow, that video was great." Wow, how did you put it together so fast? And someone, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and someone and I so I had to edit this video at work so I could I could bring it to my bosses and and whatever and show them as I was progressing. Someone saw that in one of my editing files it says YouTube. Uh oh, like there's a folder there for YouTube. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, and someone put someone else put two and two together and said, "Are you on YouTube?" YouTube. Uh, I of course denied it. Yeah, no, no, no. But uh, everyone just hammered me with questions. <laughs> Like fucking hammered. So uh, I think I was just like, okay, I'm on YouTube, but I'm not gonna tell you what I'm doing. <laughs> <clears throat> Why'd you? You, know, you should have just been like, no, that's just like a default folder that, that the app gives. Like, <sighs> and then and whatever. And then they're just like, well, why would you tell us? Because I said, because I don't want you part of my other life. <laughs> <laughs> my other life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. Anyway, so they have. <clears throat> it's gotten kind of ridiculous for the past week. Like they, they. Out of the way, it's kind of like I can't turn a corner without being on guard. Like, I have to... They're trying to casually sneak in very personal questions to give oh, hints okay. at what I like doing All right. in my personal time or or just things I... The toys you brought didn't give anything away? No. Oh, wow. It didn't. Wow. It didn't. Wow, it didn't. good stuff. It didn't, man. I got toys on my desk and no one... No one... No one right. fucking put two and two together. Right. Do you know what it is? I talk a lot about cycling at work. Oh, <laughs> okay. Smart, smart. Um. Anyways, uh, except for one person. All right. This person is very smart when it comes to computers. Okay. And this person, when they were like the last to know about this situation. Yeah. But it, like the next day, comes in. Make sure no one's around. Addresses me as Type V three. Dun dun at my desk, dun. <laughs> and I'm just what? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> um. Anyways, I I told the story on Twitter, and I said, "Oh yeah, she'll keep the secret. Well, not she's great." She messaged me back, and she said, "I didn't say I'm keeping the secret." Dun dun dun. <laughs> and she's messaging me now, and. And uh, what she's saying is, um... <laughs> she, uh, she, uh, she's like, please, 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 do not mention uh, of anything about who I am. I'm like, okay, that's all. She's um, private. Very it's private. too late. Yeah, we know. We know. About so it. everyone knows, and. Uh, that's that. We're done. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna out your we're gonna out your coworker, right? <laughs> so there's another coworker. Oh no. This one doesn't even work at my my place. Did she employment. also figure out? No, with this guy. Oh, this guy. He's uh. He's I think he's like in his mid twenties. Okay. But he's more along the lines of like what we're into. Yeah. Figured out real quick too. <laughs> <laughs> Although he messaged me this morning and he's like, yo, it's pretty sick. <laughs> he's like, wait a minute. So are you into anime? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it's like, he's like, I can, I can take this veil off. Like, so the, <gasps> this mask I've been wearing the whole time. <laughs> uh, and then he asked me about anime this season. And I'm like, uh, I'm not even caught up with this season. Yeah, because you're watching last season like a chomp. I know. I know. But whatever. So what are we going to do? Uh, yeah, so that's that. So All I got to right. be on guard now. All right. It's time. We gotta, we gotta break some, we gotta break some legs. Yeah. We gotta give her the linguini. Huh. So the funny thing is he lives, I found out he lives just down the street. Oh, how nice. I felt like he's literally hundred meters away. <laughs> small world. Very small world. Gotta get out of this place. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get out of this world. Gotta get out. Yeah. Um, so that's that. Okay. Um, good now we can talk about good, our movie review. Good story. Yeah. yeah. We went to go see the new Studio Ghibli movie. Is it really a Studio Ghibli movie? It is a Team pon Ponco. Yeah, Ponco? Studio Ponco. Studio Ponco. Team Ponco, Ponco. They are part of, I think they're a part of Studio Ghibli. Yeah. In some way, shape, or form, but their own thing. And they made a new movie. It's called Mary and the Witch's Flower. 
For sure. Sorry, Mary and the Witch's Flower. Flower. And I don't know, man. It's it's a Ghibli movie about magic and witches and fun, and that's the overview. Yeah. Do you want to do? Do you want to get into the specifics first, or do you want to give overall opinions first? Let's just spoil it. Let's just spoil it. All right. You know how it works up in here. Yeah. Full spoilers. Yeah. Full spoilers. Um. So yeah, I don't know. Let's start at the beginning. The it's set up as Mary is an English girl who lives in the countryside. Like all anime, anime parents are absent. <laughs> no parents to be seen. Yeah. She's living with her great aunt. And she wants to help out and she wants to be useful. And But yeah. she's just clumsy dits and she doesn't know what to do. She's like, oh, I got to find my place in life. I'm not good at anything. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And everything sucks. Mm. And then she finds a cat. <laughs> and then the cat leads her to a flower. And basically this flower is, is an ancient flower, <sighs> magical flower. And when used, it can give you temporary magical powers. Right, you kind of take the you take the flower. It's like it looks like a blueberry, almost like a glowing blueberry, and you crush it in your hands, and it makes the um, an amount of ooze that is like seventeen times the size of the fruit. Right? Yeah, and you take the fruit, it absorbs into your hands, and if you have a broom, say a magical broom, you can uh, rub the ooze on the magical broom, and it'll become alive, and you can fly it. And the premise of the story is that there is a school of magical people of witches and whatever. They want that flower. They haven't found it in years and years and years. And that flower is the ability to unlock the potential for humans to control unlimited magic. Yeah. Or so they think. Mm-hmm. And it is a, it is basically a, a, a rescue story that Mar- Marie is trying to rescue her friend Peta. Yeah. Uh, who got kidnapped. Yeah. And to stop the pseudo evil professors yes. from from turning him into a magical being. Yeah. That being said, I think it's a cool premise. I think this movie is very disappointing. Mm. And I think they ruined a cool premise. Mm. Because I I thought that the magical, temporary magic element would have been really cool that she can transition from magical world to real world and in between. But really, most of this movie... Like, they could have taken out the majority of the middle part where she's uh, in the school. The prince, the headmaster thinks she's, like, a, this almighty witch. And she's getting a tour of everything and, and learning about the magical whatever. That was useless. That was a useless part of the movie. It didn't move the plot forward. It just, it was an, uh, it was the animators feeling themselves being like, check out the sick world we built. Like, it's so dope, and it's awesome, and, like, obviously, all this magic stuff's cool. But in terms of adding any useful information to the story... Nada. The, yeah. Well, there's, like, a one tiny one where they show, like, the, the secret evil lock, like, yeah. the safe room where they do yeah. all their experiments. For but sure, for other sure. than that, useless. Uh, there's also just hella lazy storytelling in this, like... <laughs> Deus Ex mocking is out the ass. Like, yeah. oh man, look, there's this problem where everyone's transformed by magic and we're trapped in this room that's by magic. I wonder what we're going to do. Oh, wait, I have this book that has a spell in it that's undo all the magic. <laughs> <laughs> all magic. You like magic? It's all done. Fuck magic. It's stupid. Right? <laughs> I just have this random spell. Oh, I lost my broom like three times throughout the movie. Oh, thanks, groundskeeper. You're strictly there to take care of my broom. And that's it. And then also show up at the most opportune times yep. to help me and help me escape from situations. It's ridiculous. Mm. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you said it really great when we were discussing it outside of the movie theater. Yeah. Of that it feels, it looks like a Disney, uh, not a Disney movie, a Ghibli movie. Yeah. And it checks all those Ghibli boxes. Yeah. But it doesn't feel like it has a soul. Yeah. Right. It's not there. I don't think that that, that, that team Ponko is their, like, that's not their style. Yeah. They're trying to imitate Ghibli. But they're not. At their detriment. And yeah. they're not Ghibli. Yeah. I feel like you can't, like, I get it. Imitation is the best form of flattery. But at some point, the more and more you try to be like someone else, the less and less you're going to 
uh, come off as you're, you're going to come off worse for it. Yeah, like, exactly. it's okay to have similar concepts or, or presentations or ideas, but at the end of the day, you have to make it your own. And this movie did not feel like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, I didn't enjoy it as much. Uh, Sorry, uh, Team Panak. That's what Team Panak. Yeah, I even fell asleep multiple times throughout the movie. Did you actually? Yeah, but wow. I mean, I've also been tired lately, but uh, okay. still. Yeah, I couldn't. The, first of all, the beginning of this movie was so boring. I thought the beginning like, of her just like being clumsy and the character yeah, setting. Yeah, I was like, because like most a lot of anime movies do that. They start they try to get you to know this who, character, yeah. but for this one, it just felt so long until something happened. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought the art style was a uh, was pleasant to look at. It's Ghibli. I didn't think the animation was quite as um intricate as i as i hoped it would be oh i i would i would argue against that but oh, maybe maybe it's because i haven't seen a uh a Ghibli movie in a, in a while or maybe it's because i'm coming off of your name and yeah. that movie is fucking wow i wouldn't say it's on the same level as say like if i compare it to another ghibli movie yeah. like like spirited away like, yeah see like i don't think it was like that like good. spirited away is fucking bonkers on the animation yeah right? but it's still probably one of the most animated things I've seen in a long time, especially with the trend of anime being still frames and moving yeah, still frames and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. You should really watch your name, my friend. Yeah, I really, I gotta watch it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, it, the story definitely was very simple. Um, yeah, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. No. I just don't think they executed it very well. Yeah, like it's fine to, it's okay to, if the, if the, if the actual plot is is basic but it was it was so basic and so contrived that you kind of i almost got irritated at how simple it was ended up beating yeah i can see that especially for how simple it was and how many times they had to dig themselves out of a hole yeah it's like this is such a simple story and yet so many times they would solve problems by like oh there's ex machina yeah random convenience (laughs) Uh, oh look you you don't know how to do a thing like you could have made this more interesting but oh look this one character happened to have the item that you needed yeah and then also happens to have the powers to give you yeah that, right? like there's one part of the movie where one character asks mary like oh my god where are the things yeah and she's like i don't know i lost them and so this character says it's okay yeah no worries i got the thing i got one more thing i got one more thing for you and i i took that as a a really bad translation error yeah. or writing error yeah because i assume that scene meant more like where is the bulk of the thing right yeah. like because it, it grows it's a flower it grows in bunches right yeah. like where is it all like could i be. don't have, i don't have it could but be. they they didn't portray it in this english translation like, yeah so it was, you're just like what yeah uh i can't i can't get around the house the the groundskeeper the broom keeper yeah is his whole character is <laughs> just being there conveniently but he's also like a, he's also like god tier no one stops him yeah uh, no one touches him he flies away near the end of the movie and rainbows appear behind him you're like damn what does he do <laughs> yeah right it's like is he just the god and if it's, but then it's like if so how come he doesn't intervene because he loves brooms uh, it's all about those brooms fuck, this guy Right. Uh, there's also a, a scene where I believe it's the head scientist in the school says, oh, he'll never change. And yeah. it's like, what does the groundkeeper change from? We don't know anything about him. We yeah. just know he likes brooms. Yeah. There's a there's a they try and set up this really intricate world and it only emphasizes uh, certain gaps in their storytelling when it's there. Yeah. Right. And they they go through so much effort to show you the school and the intricacies of the classroom and the yeah the dynamics of students and different types of classes and you're and you're like getting excited. And you're like, this is awesome. This is like some little witch academia shit. Yeah. And then it um, all amounts to nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't need meet anybody else. Every single other student I want to say is has a mask on, like they're yeah. faceless. Um. She does some crazy bullshit invisibility different dimensions powers near the beginning. And then she's just like, yeah, I guess I can do that. Yeah. And it's never mentioned ever again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of, yeah, I think there's a lot of junk space in this movie and it, it weakens it overall. Yeah. Uh, I got no really yeah. more to say. Like Peter was the damsel in distress. Um, 
great. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, awesome. They reverse gender roles, right? Yeah. But it's still a damsel in distress story, which yeah. is, again, not necessarily a bad thing, but they just don't execute very well. Yeah. Right? They recycle the thing of, I'm at home base. Oh, I go to the place. Yeah. Then I go back to home base. Yeah. And I go to the place. Then I go yeah. to a different home base and I go back to the place. Oh. And, like the amount of times they had to leave and go from that school to, I guess, reset certain events so that they could set up the next event was yeah. r- really irritating. Yeah. And I don't know, like the whole time it's, I'm not mad. I'm just <laughs> disappointed. Okay, mom. I'm just disappointed. Okay. Right? Like this movie, this movie's a three. Like, I think it's fine. I think if you have, have kids or you have younger viewers who have never watched a movie like this, or there are definitely better choices, but I don't think it's a bad movie. Yeah, I don't know if I'd say it's a bad movie. Yeah, it's just, there's so much potential, and I think there's so much... Uh, wasted potential. Yeah, wasted potential, but also expectations. Yeah. Because it's coming from a, a Ghibli team. Yeah. Right? And even at the end of the movie... Yeah. There's a there was after the credits there was like a interview with the director and the yeah. lead artist and the director is like well if Ghibli's not making movies anymore we will yeah and it's like okay well you followed in his footsteps and you tried to imitate him yeah. to a T but that's not who you are and that's yeah. not what your team is like exactly I think Ghibli is Ghibli is um is a one of a kind person yeah right he knowing. People can imitate Quentin Tarantino, but mm-hmm. I don't think anybody will be able to do what Quentin Tarantino does. When Quentin Tarantino is gone, that's it. Like, he is a, an original mind. When Miyazaki is gone, for sure, that's who he is, right? Mm-hmm. The, he, they are those one-in-a-lifetime type of people to bring out original ideas and do this yeah. kind of stuff. Gonna do. Yeah. What are you going to do? Or Kurosawa, like another Japanese director. Mm-hmm. No one's going to be Kurosawa. Kurosawa. Yeah. Uh yeah, I got nothing more to say. Yeah, it's disappointing. Yeah. Like it's fine. It's okay. It's just yeah. disappointing. Mm-hmm. I'll give it a two. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. Let's move on to our picks. Okay. Let's talk about the only one that need to talk about. Let me tell you about the only one he's talking about. Oh, what is it? <sighs> you feel a rush, Vince? For Ooh, good number. For Rush Hour 4. <laughs> so, Chris Tucker Did he sign on? confirms Rush Hour 4 is happening. Chris Tucker confirms he's broke. <laughs> Chris Tucker appeared apparently on an ESPN podcast called The Plug. Yeah. Tucker was asked if him and Jackie Chan would team up ever again to do a Rush Hour of a franchise. To which Tucker replied, quote, it's happening. This is going to be the rush of all rushes. End quote. <laughs> Tucker continued, quote, Jackie is ready, and we want to do this so that people don't ever forget it. End quote. Oh, wow. Here's the thing. Rush Hour 3 was bad. It was. Rush Hour 3 is not good. Maybe it'll be the dark child. <laughs> oh, that'll be the... We don't talk about 3. <laughs> but 4, hot damn. Yeah. In return. You know, have you seen Cars 3? No. That where they made it, they completely ignored Cars 2? What, did they actually? Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. I've never seen any of the Cars movies, to be honest. Yeah. But... They're not the greatest Disney movies, but... I don't know. All right. Yeah. It's crazy. Cars 3, they just pretend like 2 didn't happen. Wow. Wow. That's some balls. Yeah. Okay. Mm. But yeah, no, Rush Rush Hour. I'm excited. It's I mean, Fuck. That's a movie from the 90s. Yeah. And I don't know. Like, the thing is, it's a sequel. Like, that movie doesn't... Does that movie still have an audience? Like... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I know Rush Hour 2 was, was one of the few movies where the sequel was more popular than the original. Rush Hour 2 is better than the original. Yeah. Wait, uh, was it 2 or 1 that had uh, the one no trouble? <laughs> uh, I think that was 1. Was that 1? Okay. In the, uh. in the in the bar? Oh, but 2 was Chinese Bamboo, very strong. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. 2. That's right. 2. I love Snoopy. I love Snoopy. Yeah. I think that's okay. Great. Yeah, that was that was the What's your most important? What's the only one you need to talk about from you? For me? Yeah. <sighs> It's time. Incoming game. Incoming game. Incoming game. Talking about that reboot? I'm talking about that reboot. Damn. 
We watched this trailer. <laughs> reboot is coming to Netflix. Yeah, reboot the Guardian Code. Reboot colon Super Cyber Samurai Squad. Like. Yeah. So uh, there's definitely a lot of backlash, I think, for this trailer. Dude, it's Power Rangers. It's yeah. not reboot. Yeah. It's it's not the reboot. Remember, first of all, it's not CG. It's a live action yeah. CG hybrid. And I didn't see any games. I didn't see Bob. <laughs> I didn't see Enzo. So this one actually takes. So I, the only way this makes sense to me is if it takes place from the other perspective of reboot. Because in Reboot, you were always behind, or you, you saw th- the show from the perspective of this... The, of the bytes. Yeah, of the bytes. Yeah. Of the AI code. Yeah. And now, in this, it seems like we're seeing the per- from the perspective of the player. Mm-hmm. The And when I, the more and more I think about Reboot, I'm like, wow. So the AI was just set to extra hard mode, and they just crushed all these players? Yeah. Is that what was happening? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. So uh, <laughs> now it's the other way around, but it seems like because it's 2018, yeah, the whole world is digitally connected. Dun dun dun. And so everything can be infected. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's it almost exactly like Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. So mm-hmm. you go into stuff and you fight the virus out. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't know, man. The, the also like the way the villain is set up. It's giving me real common rider vibes. This could be a common rider. Like, do you think that, well, like a team common rider, which is just Tokusatsu, which yeah. is Power Rangers, right? Yeah. Like, this looks super Tokusatsu to me, but, like, that's not what Reboot is. No. And at this point, Reboot is such a strictly Canadian thing. I yeah. feel like if I talk to any of my American friends and they're like, and I'm like, Reboot, they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Like, are you crazy? Yeah. Um... Like, this is such a strictly Canadian thing. Like, what is this? What is this brand resurrection for? Yeah. Right. I remember years and years ago, I went to Anime North. I want to say it was like like 2011. Yeah. Like long, long time ago. Yeah. And I was talking to one of the lead artists on Reboot, and he's like, "Yeah, we're trying to get a reboot, reboot happening. Like, we're doing this stuff. Like, he signed my art book and whatever. And he's like, "Yeah, like I'm really excited. I can't imagine this is what he envisioned. No." No, no, right, no. and to be honest, I don't even know if he would be a part of it because even though he's a part of reboot, like who owns the rights to that franchise? Yeah, right. I, I, I'm sure it's not the artist, unless it is, and he mm-hmm. just he said fuck it. But yeah, this isn't. I don't. This is confusing. I'm not gonna just say it's outright bad. Mm-hmm. Just like it's just not reboot. Like it's. I don't understand the reasoning for the resurrection of the name. Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't get it. I'll watch it. <laughs> it's like if they brought back Masked Rider, Ooh. and it was <laughs> Masked Rider, Masked Rider, and it was all CG. Ooh. Like it just does the opposite, right? I think I'd be upset if they brought back Power Rangers and it was all CG. Well, the thing you can't really bring back Power Rangers. Power Rangers is still going. What if we're like? Did you hear Bandai America no longer has rights to Power Rangers? It's Saban's Power Rangers. No, but like the whole toy line was stolen by Bandai. Oh, really? It's not anymore. Wow. Yeah. So it's all Saban? Owned by Hasbro. What? Yeah. Makers of Star Wars, Marvel Legends, and Transformers. So Disney owns the toy side of. Oh, okay. Yeah. Jesus. Huh. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a reboot, I guess. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a disappointing. Yeah, it's a. Uh, Whatever, it's reboot. Yeah, whatever. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, I got another one. Okay. Chrono Trigger. That's a game. Some uh, would like to say that it is the best RPG ever made. Sure. Is coming out on Steam. Great. And it looks like butt. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what it is with fucking Square Enix and them redoing certain, like, certain sprites and certain UIs and stuff to make it hd Like, I don't know, but, like... This shit looks like garbage. Yeah. Right? It's still it's still pretty pixel arty. I, I feel that the I, I should probably compare original to this, but it seems like they took the original sprites, HDified them, and then like smoothed out some of the some of the edges. 
yeah to not make them look as pixely yeah and it it just looks bad uh also the menus are from mm. the, that final fantasy 6 port and mm-hmm. it just looks bad and all about this looks bad but it's chrono trigger to a wider audience so beggars can't be choosers yeah if this is your only way and you don't want to pay like two hundred dollars to play chrono trigger on yeah. the super nintendo yeah even the ds one now is still like 60 bucks mm-hmm. like dude this is the way to do it it's to play unfortunately it's to play this kind of ugly ui looking version of chrono trigger <laughs> <laughs> It comes with all of the the bonuses from the DS version, yeah. like the the bonus yeah. dungeons and stuff. But whatever, man. Just play it on the SNES Classic. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Speaking of which, which it's not on there. Speaking of which, what? I walked into Toys R Us today. Saw a SNES Classic. I didn't see one. Okay. I saw five. Wow. I'm just sitting there. Well, it's past the holidays. They're still pumping out more. Nintendo didn't lie. Yeah, you, you can, you buy can go into a store and buy one. Yeah. I am so happy I was able to flip mine early on. You're a monster. <laughs> You're a monster. Am I? A, yes. Am I? Yes. Am I? Yes. Some would say I'm an entrepreneur. I would say you're a monster. I'm an entrepreneur. Monster. Wait, okay. Uh, do you have anything else? Yeah. Or you want me to go with my last small one? No. Okay, go. What's my what's what's the greatest game that I love right now? Um, uh, Monster Hunter. <sighs> so close, Overwatch. Oh, it's still. Actually, you know what? I haven't played Overwatch since. That's what I thought. Since you can play like, Monster Hunter. I know, I know, but it looks like it's time for me to return. <laughs> okay. Because there's a new character, and there's nothing more exciting in Overwatch than a new character. It's probably the only exciting thing about Overwatch. I don't know, man. I still got the the need for skins. <laughs> god damn it they also announced new weapons oh fuck there's new weapons all right continue hurry up <laughs> let's go uh new support hero yeah uh i think okay so basically reinhardt has a squire named bridget yeah bridget and uh guess what you can play bridget and she's basically a baby reinhardt wow so she got a small shield that protects herself mm-hmm. uh but she, you you go into third person she has a baby charge. Uh, she can't pin anyone with it. Yeah, so she, she has just charge forward. She charges forward. And like displacement. Yeah. And instead of a hammer, she has a mace. That's also a whip. A whip mace, which she can also... I think she throws it out and stuns to displace you. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, otherwise, she can, it's like an AoE uh, attack. And then because to be a support, she also throws down armor on people. Or she heals them. But if you're fully healed, she just gives you full armor. Yeah, and it's... It's a weird thing because you just look at someone and go, heal. <laughs> like it's it, it is, yeah, it is the most effective healing I've seen. It's just, boom, um, and then of course her her ultimate is this combo between Lucio's speed and his sound barrier. Except it's not a barrier; she just gives you armor. Yeah, and I don't know. I don't know if she's constantly giving you armor, like if it's like a regenerative armor. Yeah. Uh, but. It's mo- mainly the speed boost. Yeah. Like, I can see people doing that to tr- maybe try and quickly get on points and stuff like that. Like, yeah. It's a very team-focused ult. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, she's cool. Uh, uh, pretty cool character design. She looks like Aloy. <laughs> yeah, she does look like Aloy. I don't know. I've always liked the knight aesthetic, and that's what she looks okay, like. So, yeah. I can't wait to see what her ult costumes are. I hope she has, like, a like a Dark Knight a la Final Fantasy uh, five. That'd be cool. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, I'm not expecting it, but... Yeah. Hmm. So Overwatch, I'm I'm set to play that again. Okay. Yeah. And then the last one I got is Wreck It Ralph. Oh yeah. Two dose. Got a trailer called Wreck It Ralph Breaks the Internet. Yeah. Um, and they just showed a little te- like it's it doesn't really show much about the story. It just shows that the arcade owner gets internet, yeah. and he's on his old iMac, the ones like from Zoolander. Yeah. And he's like, we're connected to the Wi-Fi. Yeah, the Wi-Fi. Yeah, he goes in. And Fuck, I haven't and... heard someone say that in years. Like 2005. Yeah. And then he, yeah, he, it's Ralph and the little girl. Yeah. In the internet. And they're showing off like a bunch of little jokes about pop-up ads and kind of tablet games and stuff like that. Uh, It doesn't really show much about the story and what they're doing. But it shows the the humor and the like the game style humor of Wreck It Ralph is is back. 
Yeah, right? for sure. It doesn't seem as video game heavy so far, uh, mainly mm-hmm. because, like, I remember the first trailer of Record Ralph where they had, like, Zangief and Pac Man and all that stuff, right? Um, they don't really have that here. So. Yeah. But it is, it is a cool trailer. I would like, I really liked Record Ralph. I would like to see how a retro game character technically interacts with the Future? new world of tablet games and hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah. I wonder what kind of, uh, like, inside baseball humor they're going to throw in this movie. I don't know what cameos we're going to get. Huh? What do you want? What kind of cameo do you want? You don't want the Overwatch cameos. It's not going to happen. Because, no, it's in it's in the other one. It's in that other movie. Oh, in uh, Ready Player One? Yeah. I, I'm saying they're gonna get those cell phone game cameos. They're gonna no. they're gonna get those Clash Royale cameos. I want uh, the the fest case. I want Sanic. Sanic? You want Sanic? I want Sanic. <laughs> you don't want uh, Ugandan Knuckles? <laughs> I don't. If they can get that. If they put Ugandan Knuckles in that movie, oh, that'd be hot damn! <laughs> do you know the way? I do know the way. Let me show you. <laughs> she is our queen. Oh man. Um... Yeah, no, I can't think of any, like, what, what video game would I want in there? Tap Titans 2. It'd have to be something really popular and, I guess, age-appropriate, right? Yeah, uh, I don't know, Sum Sum. Like, I, when I think of cell phone games, I don't think of, I don't play, like, the ones that are multi-million dollar or whatever, right? Like, because usually those are a lot of loot crates and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if they'll make a joke about, like, you could play the whole game on one quarter in my game. Like. <laughs> wow. Okay. I guess we'll see. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Great. That's it. That's those awesome. are my picks. Awesome. Did you do a lot this week? I did. Uh, I did two small things. I didn't, okay. do, I didn't really do much. Okay. Did you do anything? I did some stuff. Okay. Yeah. So I'll start. Um, I watched a movie. I watched La La Land finally. Finally, it's great. I finally watched La La Land. Yeah. It is a very good movie. Yeah. It is a very good movie. But where's the butt? Where's, where's the, the butt? butt? This movie is just Hollywood reaching around its own body and yeah. jerking itself off. Yeah. That's the whole movie. Yeah. It is a love affair, not a love affair between two people, as yeah. the story would like you to believe. Yeah. It is a love affair with yeah. the Hollywood dream. Exactly. And following those dreams and being a star and being in the limelight and yeah. doing all this stuff. Man, it's... You could follow your dream. You could open up your own jazz club. Yeah. Right? And it's... It's really hard to look away from that, mm-hmm. right? The, the way Hollywood hyped this up and it was up for so many awards and all this stuff. And it's like, of course it was because it's you touching yourself at night. Yeah. That's what the whole movie is. And after I got that thought in my head, I couldn't unthink it. Yeah. And it happened during the movie. Oh, that's and nice. I, I think it made me, I think it maybe lessened my enjoyment of the movie as I went through. But I, I think it was, I think it was a great movie, right? It was. Do you like the ending? Where they're they're not really they're not together like yeah. it just didn't work out like yeah. uh, I thought that was in there for maybe some like added like drama because oh I thought that that was that touches on exactly what you were saying how it's about the whole the Amer- like the American dream of making it big in Hollywood yeah like, and like you give up on your personal yeah 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 they they both found their dream but they gave up on each other yeah. right and that can be like oh it's not the right time for us and stuff yeah. like that but. It's uh, it's interesting. It, it's a divisive movie for me. Yeah. Because, no, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Uh, it, it was. Yeah, it was. It was pretty good. Yeah, like yeah, I understand, like like the when you speak of it in that sort of sense of how it is, just a Hollywood t- all up up its own ass. Yeah. Know? But then you can't ignore the fact that the actual movie you're watching is. Yeah, it was also, really like, well like, done. A lot of those, a lot of those yeah. uh, soundtracks and stuff were yeah. were fantastic. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I I borrowed or I borrowed both of the uh, soundtracks from the library. I got the uh, the original song and the original score. Like yeah. that's that's some good listening music. Fuck you! I went to the library. <laughs> library is a great place. Everyone should go to the library. Yeah. If I knew about the yeah. library earlier and what it had to offer me, I would have been there more. He says wearing his cardigan. Yeah, I'm wearing a cardigan. And his fucking pin. I like this pin. It's nice. You're a good teacher. I am a teacher. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> I was a teacher for you like... You sit behind a desk. I was a teacher for like four and years. And input data. I was, I, was, I was helping impressionable young minds for like three years. You weren't a teacher. Yeah, I, I, taught them, <laughs> I taught them the important lessons. 
Like it's not illegal if you you're don't like get a cut. life coach. Yeah, that's a teacher. It's a teacher of life. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so it, it's it was pretty good. I'll yeah. say it, it was pretty decent. These? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I also started playing uh, Getting Over It with Benny something. Uh, you might have seen it online. It is the game where a man is in a pot and you have a hammer. And you have to get over things. Oh, I think I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. meme game, I guess. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Now you're talking about. So I've been playing that. Why? Because I want to know what it's all about. And you just got trapped? It's... I know what it's about. Oh, he's right? still playing it. I'm still playing it. Uh, I have been knocked down. What's wrong with you? Multiple times. What's wrong with you? It's, I don't know. Like it's the, they even say it within the game. Like there's, there's a certain thing about gamers when they're faced with the challenge, they want to overcome it. Yeah. But re the whole thing, the whole thing is a, is a metaphor for like starting over and failure is improvement. Yeah. And, the, and the thing is, is that they lay it on so fucking thick. Yeah. Like every time you fail and you fall, like, yeah. oh, I, like the announcer comes on, he's like, oh man, that really sucks. Like you lost a lot of progress, but don't worry about it. You know what? You know why? Cause you got there before and you can get there again. And like this, like really somber music starts playing and it's like, oh, they have like different quotes from like, people about like failure and restarting and everything it's like super cheesy but it like gets to you and you're like you're right man you're right i can do like do it again That's so uh... the thing is though like the majority of the difficulty comes from the controls being shit so how it works that's the difficulty i hate yeah it, it's not that like it's an interesting challenge or you're yeah. going through fun obstacles yeah it's kind of like <laughs> it's like showing up to a marathon race, but you're only allowed to use flip flops. Yeah, or the level design in this game is like you're climbing up the side of a katamari ball, uh, like an oblong katamari ball. It's just a bunch of random shit put together to make cha pseudo challenging events, right? And it's it's great. It's yeah, it's. I don't know what it is. Like I don't know what it is about this game that makes me keep wanting to play it because the controls are shit, the level design is not yeah, great. For sure. But I just for keep sure. wanting to go through it, and I don't know why. I don't know why. I think I'm trapped. <laughs> I think I'm trapped, Vince. <laughs> don't know what to do. Don't look to me for advice. Uh, yeah. Other than that, I'm playing more Monster Hunter. Yeah, that's I finished good. two armor sets. Which would you make? I uh, I finished the Teostra set. Great. With the Beetlejuice. Dual Blades, mm, the Bielsa Geese, yeah. Bielsa Geese, and then I finished the uh, Valkal, Valhazik, Valhazik. There yeah. you go, Valhazik, and that set is that set's crazy. It's got quad time regeneration on your health. Yeah, you can regenerate past your red health. Yeah, and also you get peak performance where peak performance three, where when you're at max health, you get a plus twenty attack. It's equivalent of yeah. an attack up large. Yeah. And it's like, hot damn. What the fuck, man? Like, yeah, it's it's such a good. It's really good with my hammer because like with hammer, I'll probably get like knocked over once or twice while charging like those little hits. Yeah. But it'll recharge auto, like right back to where I was. Mm -hmm. uh, the only bad thing is that like it's got negative 20 fire resistance. Mm -hmm. And I want to say like every other monster in that game is fire in some way, shape or form. So that kind of sucks. But mm -hmm. other than that, it's it's pretty dope. I feel like I played another game, but I can't remember it right now, so okay. I'm, I'm down to move on. Okay, okay. Uh, my week was, um, it was very nice weather, so I rode my bike again for the first time outside. Why? Uh, and I have to tell you something. So, okay, I have, I have two biking stories. First one is I, uh, all, so this past couple months, I've been riding my bike on my trainer, mm -hmm. as in it's bolted to this thing. Yeah. And... And I, when I remember going on my trainer, the first thought back in November was, oh, this feels weird. It feels very secure, but it feels harder to push the pedals. Okay. I was like, whatever. I got used to it. Mm -hmm. So I go out on the road. And, like, you never forget how to ride a bike, but I completely forgot what my bike felt like to ride. Okay. 
uh i didn't realize that it was i forgot like a part of me forgot that i have a road bike like a light road bike and so i put my foot down it just bolted forward i'm like oh oh that's why i like this it's thing got some horsepower yeah to it. and then and then i was like that's great um but i forgot that skinny tires are very and combination of skinny tires and i purposely bought a bike that has a very short wheelbase so that i could turn quick okay but the negative side is it's very twitchy mm-hmm. it's not a very stable stable and I, I felt almost like I would almost fall so many times. Uh, it's like I forgot all my high level biking skills. And uh, you're on that train. Yeah, and I was like, well, I gotta relearn this shit again. But uh, so that was fun. The other thing I did was I went to a science and sport fitness center mm-hmm. to do my baseline fitness test for the start of this year to see where I am at and where I can improve. Mm-hmm um and it it's only 20 minutes but it is the hardest cycling thing you can do the idea is they're looking for your ftp ftp stands for functional threshold power basically it that's a Call fancy me a nerd it's it's a fancy way of just saying what is the maximum sustained effort mm-hmm. measured in power or watts that your body can put out for an hour like it's looking for your maximum effort that you can put out for an hour uh, of course, they don't do a full, full full hour because it's hard to really gauge what that is, and it's a long time to put in. So instead, they make you they give you a twenty minute test, and they say we're gonna put a hundred and ten percent of your maximum effort in twenty minutes. Okay. And the way the math works out is we can calculate that over this amount of time, ninety percent of that effort is what you would be able to do for an hour. Anyways, it was hard. Mm-hmm. And uh, but it was fun, but it was cool because they hook you. They they have sensors everywhere. They have a oxygen mask on you so that you um, uh, they know how how much um, effort your body could put in before you need oxygen to to restore to your muscles. Like it, I think it's called your VO two max, where it's like how much effort can your body put out before it needs oxygen to replenish itself. Mm So it was cool. I got, I got graphs. I got charts. You got numbers. I got so I got five pages of numbers that I, I got my like heart rate and wow. like and I was just studying this stuff. Like wow, that's a lot of numbers. That's a lot of graphs. But it was cool. It was cool. Uh, I think I'm gonna do one of these like every month just to see, um, see improvements or or what declines. That, yeah. Hopefully it's an improvement. I can only. I hope I can only go up from here. You want to go to that new donut store? Uh, I already went. Damn. They have some weird donuts. Okay. Um, yeah, so that was fun. But the thing that I got hooked on this week was on Netflix. Have you heard of the show called Terrace House? Dude, you're watching Terrace House too? Yeah. Yes! Which one are you watching? Uh, the Aloha State version. Oh, I'm not watching that one. I'm watching the first season. So the first season is really good. And I'll say... Okay, so for, for those listening, Terrace House is kind of like Big Brother. Except there's a little... It's not as uh, drama filled. Not drama filled, but it's not like it's not so forced in the sense that you're you're stuck with these. You're people stuck with these people. You're st- like the great thing about Terrace House is you go to this house, but you still live your life. And people come and go from the house. Yeah, and they could choose to leave whenever they want, and they leave for different reasons, yeah. and they come in for different reasons, and it's and I think that's great in combination with the fact that I'm still like I have zero experience when it comes to japanese social norms or interactions and just how they uh process and handle situations Mm -hmm. like a very western thing to do is like say if me and you had an issue we would confront each other or we would talk it out that's the big brother drama but yeah in terrace house that doesn't happen no no, especially especially if if the person who's offending someone else is older like if they're your senpai yeah you're not gonna not gonna talk shit. You're not gonna say anything. Yeah. So these people have like bottled up emotions, and it's yeah, they do. It's fucking. It's so sad, but it's 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 great to watch. Anyways, so I haven't watched a lot of the original one because um I walked in when someone else was watching it, and they were like on episode thirteen. I'm okay. like, I'll, I'll have to go back and watch it another time. Yeah. So instead, I watched the new one, Aloha. Yeah. So they're in Hawaii, and this one is super interesting because um. Still all Japanese people, yeah. but now they're all in Hawaii. And the thing about being Hawaii is it's not Japan, so it's yeah. even tougher for these people to interact. Yeah. Uh, also, the people that they've chosen aren't necessarily Japanese. Mm-hmm. Like, they still have to speak Japanese, 
but I'll give you an example. One of the girls is half European, half Chinese. Okay. And she just knows Japanese. She speaks Japanese because uh, she watched... What did she watch? I want to say because she got hooked on watching Japanese dramas. Oh, J-dramas. Okay. Yeah. And that's 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 how she knows Japanese. That's it. She can't really read it. She just knows it. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of halfies there. Uh, the age gaps are interesting. It's... uh. Oh, it's so good. All right. Yeah. It's, that is like a reality show. Uh, yeah. Where I was like, I can get down with this. Yeah. Like, I don't usually like these kind of shows, but for this one, I liked it. Also, with a lot of Asian shows, they always cut to people. Like, why is it in Asian shows they have, of, like, in the box corner, it's like someone watching a show? So that's the thing that's like extremely, extremely, extremely Japanese yeah. about this show is that you are watching the show, yeah. but there's also a pa- you're also watching a panel there's, of yeah, there's people commentators watching the show, and you're watching them watching yeah. the show. And 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 at first I was like, this is weird, but I totally understand it now. I totally get the fact that like if you're watching this by yourself, or if you're watching with someone else, you yeah. guys have conversations, right? Yeah. But they also have conversations, and it's almost nice to have that validation, even though you're not directly interacting with them. Yeah. It's nice to get opinions from someone else. Yeah. And then, like, oh, I was like, I was watching a couple episodes by myself. Yeah. And then, like, someone else said the thing I was thinking, and I was like, <gasps> yeah. And it's like, oh, that, that's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. yeah and yeah, it's yeah. and or, or like, I don't quite understand why they did this, and because they're the Japanese commentary, they elaborate, yeah. and then it's just like. Oh, I will say at least in the first season. I don't know if it's a different in the Aloha one. Yeah, but the theme song for the first season sucks. I hate the theme song <laughs> for the first season. Uh, it's trash. I, if it is the same one, I will say I like it because it is so. It's so, so cheesy. Oh, it's so bad. Especially the the intro to the show is super cheesy. Yeah, it's just yeah. like a bunch of people and they're showing the still shots and they're, and they're doing their thing. <laughs> oh, this guy's into sports and he's swinging a baseball. Yeah, man. but like the Hawaii one's cool because of the the characters they bring in. Like they bring in a fucking Jap- a Japanese pro surfer. Yeah. And he's just, and he he talks a little bit of a slur, and he talks a little slower. Mm -hmm. He's fucking great. His name is Guy. (laughs) Okay. He's the coolest. Um, Yeah, man. They got everything. They got the fucking classic nerdy Japanese boy who's never been with anybody trying to ask out the fucking supermodel. Yeah, you gotta aim high. Yeah, and it's just like, I I just want to cheer for them so hard. I know that's going to crash and burn, but yeah, but yeah, it's a great show. It's a good show. I'm, I can't believe I'm, I'm so hooked on it. Like it's listen, no, I understand. It's a good show. It's yeah. Good. Like I honestly, like I have also been playing monster hunter, but not nearly as much as I would like. Well, listen, Terrace house is a finite quantity. Yeah. Monster hunter can last. Yeah, so. that's true. I understand. Yeah. So yeah, I told, if there's anything you want to take away from this podcast this week, I would say go watch Terrace, yeah, Terrace house. house. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I remembered the other game I played. I'll let you play. So I played a game called Caladrius Blaze. Mm-hmm. It is a Japanese bullet hell top down shooter. Yeah. Right? Uh so it, the game's pretty cool. Uh you can play as like seven, eight different characters. They all have different powers. Yeah. And uh they're all connected to different buttons. Each has three powers, and every time you complete a stage you get upgrade points based on your performance and you can For sure. upgrade your powers to be stronger. That's not the part I'm getting to. The part I'm getting to is that I didn't realize it was in the game when I bought it, but there is a thing called shame breaks. Shame breaks? When I say shame breaks, what what do you think that means? Shame breaks? Shame breaks. I have no idea. So when you're fighting a boss... That's bo- like when you're asking me, what do you think Baroque means? What do you think Baroque means? <laughs> I don't fucking know. If it ain't Baroque, don't fix it. Um... Yeah, so shame breaks are in the game, and what they are is when you're playing against a boss character. Yeah. In these bullet hell games, bosses usually have different stages. If you do and break certain objects on a boss before their health bar gets to a certain segment to start off the next stage of the boss, you get the shame break. And what it does is that it decloses the character that you're fighting against. Oh my god! And they get slowly get more and more naked. Until you get... If you get every single shame break, they are... They don't show any nudity, but it might as... Like, there's, like, two pieces of fabric covering girls' yeah. nipples. There's, like, 
Like, only the crotch part of their pants is there. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And I'm like, I can't play this with people anymore. <laughs> this game is fun, though. Yeah. Um, and you unlock a special CG print that you can view in the viewer wow. of the unclothed boss that you have defeated. Wow. And also, every single time you die as a character, your character gets more and more declothed. And when oh. and when you run out of lives to get a continue, you're again almost naked as your character. Are you a girl too? You can be a girl. Oh god. You can be lots of girls. I want to say 80% of the characters you play are women. Okay. Yeah. And then there's a phoenix mm -hmm. as a child. Yeah. There is a boy magician. Mm -hmm. And I th I want to say the rest of the characters are female. Mm -hmm. It's a ridiculous game. It's mm -hmm. a very fun uh, bullet hell it uses the power-ups very uniquely you get set up in certain situations where if you didn't use power-ups in the correct way yeah. you will die so you have to play with the yeah. mechanics and that's really cool yeah but man there's just that extra hint of japanese on it and i'm yeah. like god damn it <laughs> why are you here so yeah it's a good game but i just wish it didn't have that uh, <laughs> i wish it didn't have that you love it it's so dumb <laughs> you love it like i love it because like i can show other people and be like look at this dumb shit yeah yeah <laughs> not because i want it there Ooh. it's not like i wanted to see half naked girls or anything <laughs> start being all soon dead about it but yeah yeah wow great great Glad you're revealing your colors one yet again. Yet again? Yet the again. weave is strong. Yeah, the weave is strong. The weave is strong. Don't let anyone fool you. <laughs> <sighs> what have I done? You tell me. Bad you thing. Me. Bad thing. Yeah, that's it. That's great. Are you great. done too? Yeah. I can I interrupt you in the middle of what? Hmm? I thought I interrupted you in the middle of your week, but... No, not at all. I was done. All right. I had nothing else after Terrace House. Perfect. I think that's it. I think that's the show. It is a show. Thanks for listening. I guess we'll see you next week. What's yeah, next week? Next week is... I don't think there's any movies. No? Not sure. I feel like we should sit down and watch the initial D movies. Yes. Can like we, the new yeah, ones? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. We Wait, should... should we... Do initial D time. Can we start from the beginning movie and just watch till the end? You want to watch four movies? I want to watch four movies. Not in a row. Like, week by week. Oh, yeah. I yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. I don't want to do that all at once. Yeah, no, no, no. No, we're doing it all at once. <laughs> we're doing it right now. No, okay, no, no. let's like start week next by, week. Week by week, we'll go. And okay. then And then maybe we can start our, our whole thing of saying, like, we should take, like, a shot. <laughs> like, we should take, like, a shot before the show. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta get... Okay, yeah, Friday's payday for me, so, uh, yeah. We'll do it. And drinks and... Initial... Drinking and driving. <gasps> oh! Oh! Yes, new segment, oh. Drinking and Driving, oh. where we drink and review movies that have driving in it. Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. It's the only time I condone this. <laughs> Is okay. This... Sounds good. It's perfect. I'm excited. Drinking and Driving. All right, I better get those movies then. Man, I thought about that on the fucking spot. Yes, you did. So good. Good for you. I'm good. Uh, mothers against drunk drivers don't uh, <laughs> please don't sue us ride checks please don't <laughs> don't go mad did guys. i ever tell you this at least on the podcast i ever tell you the story about me getting a ride check you got ride checked i got ride checked before that sucks so i was coming home at the time from my ex's house yeah and i was coming back up our like how our city is is that there's a downtown is an uptown and it's literally a mountain separating it so it's coming up the mountain yeah and I had just got back from my exes, and uh, we were, like, playing games and doing all this stuff. And so I was going up the mountain, and I got stopped. And it was yeah. a female police officer. Yeah. She rolls up. She's like, uh, she looks in, and she didn't ask me for my license or registration because they don't really ask you unless they're suspicious. So she puts her light on me because it's nighttime. She's like, have you been drink?" And she doesn't finish the word drinking. She yeah. says, Dri she, her light is now on my passenger seat. Which has an arc fighting game arcade stick on it. Aww. And then she immediately goes, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been blitzed out of my fucking mind. And she's like, oh, this guy's a dork. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming late from playing the video, video games. games. You can go. <laughs> you can go. <laughs> That's so sad. It's not my proudest moment. That's so sad. But it's a good story. That's so sad. <laughs>
That sucks. There you go. I've never been ride checked. Really? Because every time I see it, I turn around and I find a different route. All the times I get ride checked, I'm on a place where I can't. Like, it's uh, usually like a mountain access or something like that. I see. That sucks. What you gonna do? That sucks. What you gonna do when they come for you? I don't really have any good stories. With the police? Like, the best one I have is, like, I saw an undercover cop. Like, you know the double left turn lanes? Yeah. He was on the inside, I was on the outside. Yeah. I went around him. And I told my friend in the past, I'm like, we're going to smoke this guy. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize the undercover cop. And as we're going by him, I was going like 120 yeah. on a 50. <laughs> and? And we went by and he's like, is that a computer in his oh, car? No. And then the lights came on. And then they pulled me over and the, the guy was really nice. He's like. He's I'm like, fast. He's like, he's like, hey, you were kind of fast. I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh. Cause I was, I was 17 at the time. I was like, I'm just trying to make it home before curfew. You're going to jail <laughs> because our curfew is one and it is 1256. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you know, he's like, he's like, he's like, I'll be straight with you. I don't really mind if you're going that fast. The thing that you can't control is if someone jumps out in front of the road. He's like, cause then you can't do anything. I'm yeah. like, oh, that's true. He's like, so it's not so much. It's not that. We don't believe you can't handle the speed. Yeah. That's what he Need said. He said, but at night, especially on a dark road, someone will come in. Or something. Yeah. Right. And especially then, around us. We have a lot of yeah. deer and shit. And then he's like, and you can't, you can't stop that. Yeah. So he's like, just be mindful. And he let me go. Nice. Yeah. Cause like, dude. Yeah. You would have been in jail. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's good. All right. It's good. All right. Uh, didn't work the second time though. That's when you went to jail. <laughs> That's when I got my four hundred dollar ticket. That's a story for another time. Yeah. Anyways, thanks for listening. Look Drink- forward next week for drinking and driving. Damn. Hell yeah! All right, I'm so proud of that.